Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back at the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, we're on part two of the little dwarf neon rainbow fish breeding series. Now I've just put in some glass worms. As you can see those little guys hopping around in there. I've just turned the lights on. Because some of you were asking last time about the substrate. Now I completely forgot about that. I do apologise. It's just completely normal sand. It's made by JBL. I think it's called Sanz Sanzibar, I think it's called. And it's just bog standard black sand that's all it is or grey sand in this case they're all hiding they're all whizzing around in the spawning mops at the back already and the lights have just come on and that normally spooks them but they're starting to rake up a bit their fins are starting to twitch as you can see down in that right hand corner there the males are starting to go and see who's receptive and then they'll dive into that spawning mop and they should start releasing some eggs hopefully with a bit of luck and that live food in the water We'll encourage him to do that. Look at that, nice little bit of displaying going on there by one of the males. We've got one male still in the top of the spawning mop on the left hand side. He's a bit quiet, but the three mo the most dominant ones are on the bottom. I've left him in there because I didn't want to upset them anymore by putting nets in and messing about like that. So I'm just going to let this run now and hopefully I'll catch some spawning action and I can go back and edit it later on. Because I'm dying for my cup of coffee. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Right guys, a little bit of time has gone past now. And I've been down this morning. They've been very, very busy in amongst that spawning mop. And um, for the last couple of days they've been really going in and out of there. As you saw the other footage of them diving behind. I only got to go in there for a split second. Quick coupling together and those eggs are produced. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually pull out that spawning mop there. Now I've put another one in, you notice over there, because they were a little bit stressed so I gave them a little bit more cover and made another one and put it over in that corner because they were tending to hide under that sponge filter so I've just given them a little bit of extra security and um, and that's, that's really done them well, that really made them come out of their shell. Now they're acting a little bit spooky at the moment because I've been banging around and doing a couple of bits in here this morning so uh, that's why they seem a little bit quiet and on the bed there on the sand just rooting about now what I'm going to do is I've got a nice pot, uh, little perspex bowl here I'm going to put that down in front of the tank now I'm going to pull out this and just to make sure that they because what I don't want to do these guys will lay eggs all the time and they will li literally build up and I don't want to have hundreds of them there you know the, the main thing with, with my videos is is to show you how it, these things, are, you know, how they, how easy they are to breed and how to get them going and all that stuff. Not to bring up six trillion fry and have nowhere to put them. So I want to get some more of these out for the bench tank. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to pull this, pull this spawning mop out. Okay, so I'm going to twist you down onto this bowl. can get that nice and central for you and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to carefully lift this spawning mop out now as long as you keep spawning mops wet okay nothing's going to happen to the uh, nothing is going to happen to the eggs so I'm just going to slowly slowly lift this guy out of there and let it drain through I'll be with you in a minute guys, I'm just holding this spawning mop out, draining a little bit of water out. Ooh. Okay, and then leave it in a big clump, just like that. Now I've got a torch, and what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this, and I'm just going to part it very, very carefully. And what they'll tend to do is, they'll go right down the base where that big knot is at the bottom. You can't see that, where the big knot is at the bottom there. Okay, let me get a bit, a little bit lower on the old light. And already, oh wow, look at that. Can you see those guys? I'm, I'm gonna, I can, there's a heap of eggs in there. Bear with me. Which is a good sign. Now we've got a lot of eggs just in that one little area there. Focus, dude. 
Now then, I'll shine it. Can you can you see all those little pearls in there? I don't want to shine too much on them, but look, there they are. One there, three. They're absolutely all over the place. All in amongst. And that's just in one little area there. So you can see we've got some, which is brilliant. I'll just go around here as well and have a look. And I can see loads of them around here as well, which is fabulous stuff. And there they are, you can see them there, right in the center of the screen, lots and lots of little, little pearls, all stuck to those fibers. And that's what we want. So, what I'm going to do now is come around this side so you can see. And I can put that now carefully back into the water. And flip that weight so it goes over again. And manoeuvre it. Sorry, my camera works a bit shoddy, guys. And then move that back into there like that, into that corner. Now that spawning mop's probably got some on as well, but I don't need to really mess around with that because we know we've got some in there, so touch wood, there'll be some in the other side as well. Now I'm going to leave them in there for one more day, and then I'm going to pull these guys out. And then hopefully, within a week's time, we should have some little fry swimming about in here. You can see some brine shrimp swimming around in here as well, which I'm feeding them on to get them to go. Some blood worm on the, on the bottom as well. But we'll see how we get on. Right, okay guys, it's been another day and what I've done is I have moved now all the fish out into the bench tank and I've just rearranged the spawning mops, opened them all out with my tongs, fluffed them up in the water. Well, I've done that actually just now. You can see bits of debris still rolling around in the water there. Turn your sponge filters down now as well, guys. You can see I've just got it just bubbling away on the surface there but it's still it's still cycling through because we're going to keep that water nice when the baby's hatched there's still some live food swimming around in there don't worry about that too much or if you are worried about it you can always get in a fine net and scoop those guys out and feed them to your fish the blood worm will be fine in there i'll probably take those brine shrimp out and put them into the bench tank but if we go in amongst These little fronds you can see. There you go guys, you can see some of the eggs there in the middle of the screen and to the right. I'll just put some right in the middle there. There you go. I'll try and get as close as I can. But there you can see those little tiny pearls stuck to those fibres on that spawning mop. And there's quite a few. Now we've got quite a few there which is all a good sign and that's just that many in one area so you can guarantee there's going to be quite a few in there when they do hatch out like I said I don't want to be bringing on millions of these little guys just need enough take some back to the shop and put some into my bench tank anyway it's a waiting game now we've got to wait for about a week before these guys hatch okay they're not very quick hatches but as soon as they hatch we'll be on to part three and that's rear in the fry and showing you what these little guys look like. Anyway, guys, as always, your stars. Thanks for following along for part two of how to breed dwarf rainbow fish, the old dwarf neon rainbows. And as always, love you loads, your all stars. Take care, and I'll see you on part three. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.